Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint a cornucopia. I did this on a black painted canvas, so it's just a regular canvas that I put a coat of black paint on, so I used Mars Black for that. You'll also need raw umber, primary yellow. So the primary yellow was only used in the petals of this, so you only need a little bit of yellow for this. The red, Pyrrell Red, was used only in the apple. Hooker's Green Hue Permanent was used only in the leaf. You're welcome to sub red out for a different red and same with the green. Deep Violet was used only in the grapes. Naples Yellow is an optional color for this if you're trying to eliminate some of the colors in this, but I only use that in the wheat and a little bit on the sunflower. Instead of Naples Yellow, you can actually use raw sienna for the wheat and a little bit on the sunflower. Raw sienna was also used in the light brown colors of the cornucopia, so if you want to eliminate colors, Naples Yellow is one that you is you don't have to use. Red Oxide is also an optional color. I only use that in the ground area. If you want to eliminate that one, you can use one of the brown colors for the ground. Around. 10 colors in this painting also use titanium white that color was used quite a bit for this painting and for brushes I only use three brushes for this a um, little bit simpler for brushes we I used a one inch flat that was only to cover the canvas black initially the 12 bright I only use that for the ground area you can also use that a little bit in the pumpkin in the apple for the bigger areas of those objects and the number four round brush that was used the most in this painting. So only three brushes for this. You also need a ruler. The ruler was used to draw the horizontal table line and we will be drawing this cornucopia. I used a white chalk pencil to draw this. If you don't have a white chalk pencil, you can use a piece of chalk, a white color pencil, a regular drawing pencil. It's just that the white color the white chalk pencil shows up against the black background and also it erases, which is kind of nice. We're going to go ahead and get started. I have a canvas that I've already painted black. This was a mess up painting and basically one layer of Mars black paint is all you need to cover the canvas. Let it dry and then we are going to be using a white chalk pencil to draw the cornucopia first. You are welcome to use my printable template for this and a white piece of graphite paper to transfer the design to this. We're going to start by sketching out a large, it's not exactly a circle, it's kind of more of an oval because the, the basket, the cornucopia basket, is resting on the table and it's a little bit on its side. So we want to make this not exactly a perfect circle, it's kind of more like an oval. So I'm just going to sketch this out using multiple lines to just sketch the shape that I want. And it's not entirely centered on the canvas. I left a little bit of more space on the left. So you can see it's, it's centered but a little bit more towards the right. That's going to give you enough room for the horn shape part of the basket. And then I'm going to sketch this second inner line to make it more of a ring shape. This is going to help us with drawing and painting the basket, kind of curved, textured basket texture along the circumference of the opening. So I have kind of an oval ring shape. It's very large, so the height of this is about seven and a quarter. The width is about six and a half. So you want to make sure you're drawing this very large on the canvas. I'm sketching the horn shape so it kind of curves up and it attaches to the top part of that circle. So it, it kind of curves, attaches, goes to a point doesn't exactly go to a, a point, it kind of curves on the end. I'm going to skip down here. So down here it starts out kind of flat because it's resting on a table or it's going to be resting on a table. So we want to make the bottom part a little bit flat. I'm just going to sketch this down. It kind of goes flat and then it meets the very center bottom part of that opening. 
the beauty about these white chalk pencils is that they erase. So if you do sketchy lines like I do, so I'm doing kind of multiple lines until I get the line that I'm kind of going for until I achieve the shape that I want. But after painting this, if any of the white lines are still showing through, we will be able to erase leftover white lines. So you just kind of gently sketch that involves drawing multiple lines until you achieve the shape that you are going for. That's why I'm going over these lines to really kind of define the final line that I want. We also are going to draw little curved lines on the basket opening. I'm going back over that one. Um, you wanna kind of make sure that the distance between those two oval shapes are kind of equal distance. So in between those two oval shape lines, I'm doing curved lines. And they're not really supposed to be going outside the line. They're just on the inside. So I'm curving it and I'm just kind of take this and I'm gonna continue drawing the same curved line going in the same direction and that's going all the way around inside of this ring shape that we drew. And you want to try to make them the same distance apart. So they're about three quarter inches apart. If you want to make them closer together you can. You can do them like a half inch apart but it's not changing direction. It's still the same curve going in the same direction all the way around this opening of the basket. So drawing these curved lines, this is really gonna help us when we start painting this in. And like I said, if any of those lines went outside the line, that's okay. So that's all I'm going to do for the drawing portion. I don't want to draw the pumpkin or apple or grapes yet. So what I'm gonna do is as I'm painting this, we're gonna start by painting just the cornucopia basket first. But every time I'm ready to add an object, I'll use this white pencil to draw my object in. I'm actually erasing this part right here cleaning this up. But like I said, if you need to clean up your lines later after the painting, you'll be able to erase that as long as it's not painted over. So when you are done with the first step, that's drawing this cornucopia. See, it's messy. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's a good guideline to help get us started with the painting portion. Really quick, I'm gonna draw my table line. So this is just a regular ruler and I didn't measure how far up this goes, but if you want to measure it, mine is actually three and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas, but yours does not have to be that exact. You can just draw a line and make sure that it's going behind your cornucopia. That's gonna make it look like that is sitting on a table. And when you're done with the drawing, we can load our palette with the colors that we'll be using to paint the basket. So we will be needing raw sienna, raw umber, and titanium white. So a light brown, dark brown, and white. You'll need water and a number four round brush. Let's load our number four round brush in the water, kind of tap it dry, grab your light brown and your white about equal parts. So we are lightening this brown. So it's gonna turn into a light kind of golden brown color. So I'm going to paint the curved parts here first go around the opening. And we are gonna do, just pick any of them to start with. We're just gonna paint them in like a curved direction. And we're gonna be doing that to each 
little slot. So this one, you see how I loaded my brush with more raw sienna to make this one a little bit darker, actually adding a little bit more of the dark in there. So the point is that we want to have each of these little curved basket weave pieces to stand out from each other. And to do that, we're just going to kind of alter the color every time we paint this. So I'm only doing this with the foreground. I'm doing curved strokes. And just by curving your strokes in this direction, that helps to give it kind of a 3D look. But I'm not necessarily doing a pattern of dark light, dark light. You could do it that way, but I didn't want it to look like a pattern. I'm just making sure that each one kind of stands out. You can also leave a little bit of black showing through. So you don't have to paint to see how that one ended up with like a little slither of black. You can do that to kind of help divide those up. Also, when we're done with this, there is a step where we do some black outlining on this. So I'm just gonna keep going. Go in a curved direction with those paint strokes. I'm using the raw sienna and that gold color that we made when we mixed the raw sienna and white together. We have a brown, a dark brown in there. We can also introduce that into some of these. And that'll kind of alter your brown a little bit more by using that different kind of brown. So I am going to continue doing this all around the opening of the basket. So basically just keep repeating this. It does get a little tempting to get kind of lazy with this. In fact, I got kind of lazy as I went around because um, it is a little tedious to paint all these little curves. I am going to go silent here while I finish this step. If there's anything else kind of important, actually right now that's kind of important what I'm doing. Um, Occasionally you can use a little bit of that white and that helps to kind of brighten and highlight some of these. It's not required, but sometimes adding a few strokes of white in there that will help get some of them to kind of stand out. Also, it's okay to go outside of the lines a little bit of what we drew. So some of that kind of piece of the curve when you make the stroke. If that doesn't stay in that ring line exactly, that's okay. I'm going to go back and add a little bit of white to some of these, but not all of them. So like right here where those ones kind of mushed together, but adding that little kind of white to kind of blend on one side helps to kind of add some color variation in there. So I'm doing that to most of these. You don't need to do it to all of them. You can also go back, you see how I'm just kind of like dragging that brush just on one side. And then you can also go back with the brown and do the same thing on the other side. Um, you might find that you need to wipe the brush off. So my brush is so loaded with all the different colors, but if you find that it's really not working, you can wipe the brush off, rinse it off, start over with it. So there's the first part of my border of the basket. When that dries a little, we can always go back and use black to kind of outline that. 
I'm going to start painting the rest of the basket. So the part, the horn part, this is a very similar technique to what we just did, only kind of a larger area that we're covering. So I'm going to make the top part a little bit lighter and kind of do the darker part at the bottom using the same colors, starting with the raw sienna and the titanium white, and then adding the brown at the bottom. So I'm gonna do this kind of one section at a time. I'm using my round brush, kind of pressing firmly with a round brush, starting at the top and just kind of stroking down, going in a curved direction all the way to the bottom of the basket. So at the bottom, we're just adding a little bit more of the darker brown at the bottom and at the top, a little bit more of the lighter color at the top. If you end up covering over some of the border, you can always go back and repaint. See how I'm repainting that part of the border that should be kind of slightly overlapping. But we are going to continue to paint more of these curved kind of ribbed areas along the horn part of the basket. So down here, I'm starting with that darker brown and we can grab some of our raw sienna. But the technique is similar to what we did with the border in that we are changing this color a little bit so that it stands out. And also you don't need to worry about covering all of your black canvas all the way. If that's some of that black is still showing through, that's okay. So down here at the bottom, a little bit more darker and shadowy at the bottom. So adding more of the darker brown and then continuing to do one little section at a time going in that curved direction. So at the top, it's slightly lighter at the top. It kind of slightly curves at the top too. This little bit of like a bump where it starts. It's a lighter color using the lighter brown and the white. But you're going in that curved direction. A little bit of water in there helps to get that paint to flow. So I'm going to kind of like not do the full piece. I'm going to do the top parts of it first and then I'll go back and do the bottom parts. But I'm kind of doing this so that I can divide this up so that each, see how this gets kind of really narrow as we get to the point of the, the horn shape. So I'm grabbing more of, I know that's kind of like an awkward camera angle here, but lighter colors, I'm just kind of doing the curved sort of stroke on the end. And you can add more white in there to make it lighter towards the top, just like what we did with the border. Just kind of dragging that white down. But that's how we create that kind of a the basket shape of the horn part. And then we can go back and do the bottom parts of it. So this is with the darker brown and the raw sienna, but not so much white. So adding that down at the bottom, I'm still going in that curved direction. So I'm just using each of these as their own kind of segment, darker brown. And try not to blend all your colors all the way. So leaving these browns kind of unblended help that helps with that back basket texture. And it's also not super realistic either. So I'm filling up the rest by extending these curved shapes downwards. I'm also leaving a little bit of that black showing through between each of the little kind of ridges of the basket. So this lighter part kind of blends down into the darker part. But you can see there's like a variation of that brown because they're not all blended all the way. If you end up having some of your white chalk lines from the drawing still showing through, those will erase as long as it's not painted over it will erase. So let's go ahead and rinse our round brush off and you'll need your bright brush next. We're gonna paint a little bit of the inside, although the inside is really dark, we could really just leave it black, but I wanna add a little bit of color in here. 
So this is the tall bright brush and I just loaded that into my two browns, that dark brown and the light brown. And I'm just going to kind of do some messy little painting in here. So kind of curvy, a little bit angled in the center, but leaving a lot of that black showing through. We really want to just keep that inside really dark, but adding that kind of scribble of brown in there adds some interest. So if you do that and it ends up being too bright, you can always go back and add some more black in there. This next step, I'm going to paint some of the table area. And I did that with the color raw oxide. So I chose raw oxide because it's like a brownish red color, but we need a color that's different from the cornucopia basket. So if we use the same brown, it may blend in too much. So I picked something different. See how it's kind of like an orangey, orangish color, copper color. And so this is the 12 bright brush. I am not trying to cover the entire table. I'm just kind of gently, almost dry brushing this across, leaving a lot of the black showing through. In fact, especially right under the basket, we want a lot of that black still there because it's kind of casting a shadow on the table. You can also take your Mars black and go back over this because this red oxide is a really strong opaque color. I still want this table to be relatively dark just because we want enough contrast under that cornucopia. So I'm taking this black and I'm just kind of letting that black blend in with our red oxide color. So it's just kind of blending in, but I'm leaving a lot of this area just under the cornucopia to be shadowy. And also there's going to be other objects painted here as well that will have shadowy areas underneath. So it gives our table some color. We have our table area defined and there's enough contrast just under the basket for it to stand out. A little bit more of the red oxide here. So I mentioned earlier that red oxide is an optional color. If you're simplifying the color palette, you can do this with Maybe the raw umber, that really dark brown, you can kind of do the same thing and use the black to make sure there's enough contrast under the basket. What I want to do next is a little bit of outlining with the number four round brush and Mars black. So this outlining is gonna really help your basket be more defined, especially in this border area. So I'm taking the black and I'm going back over the division. So that curved line that's in between each of these little basket weave curvy pieces and on the bottom too. So I'm not outlining the entire shape. See so the side and that curved piece. Since we're doing a fine line, it helps to add a little bit of, of water to your black and also twist the brush when you load the brush. It gets that black paint right there on the tip of the brush. So outlining the left side of the curve for each of these and also the outer edge of it. If you want, you can outline the inner edge of it. Let's see how outlining the outer edge it helps to give that more shape, more of that basket border texture that we're going for. Creates that division line and it really helps that to stand out. So I'm going all the way around through that curved line from the outer part to the inner part. If you want to outline some of the inner pieces, you can, because that when you do that, see I'm just kind of outlining maybe that curve on the inner part. That also helps get that to stand out a little bit better. You don't have to outline all of it. Likewise, we can do some outlining to the horn-shaped part of the basket as well. This one, so you can decide for yourself. If you want each of the little kind of ribbed pieces to be outlined all the way, you can. 
I only found it necessary to kind of outline maybe half of it. So I did a lot of the bottom parts. So outlining, curving, and then going up. And maybe some of the top part, but I didn't outline everything. If you want to outline everything, you can. So all of this gets outlined. It gets a lot smaller. Right here, the upper part outlining, but I didn't make those lines connect all the way. So again, doing the black loose outlining helps get that back basket texture to kind of stand out a little bit better. Went back in with some of the brown on the base of that. Now we are done with the basket part of our cornucopia and everything needs to dry. When everything dries, I recommend getting an eraser and erasing any leftover chalk pencil lines. And as long as it hasn't been painted over, it should come off fairly easily with a regular, this is just a regular pink eraser that I'm using. And I am not doing this over wet paint, this has dried. So you wanna make sure you dry your painting. Um, I like to use just a regular hair dryer to dry my paintings if I don't wanna wait. So get that all erased. And this next step, we will be drying the pumpkin. So we'll be using a white chalk pencil to draw our pumpkin next. This is going to be sort of a large pumpkin and it's going to be situated in front of the basket opening. So I like to draw pumpkins this way. I like to start with the middle oval. So I am sketching the middle oval first. It's about three and three quarter inches high. And then the two curved lines next to that first oval. You're gonna, you draw a curved line and you go all the way down and it kind of curves on the bottom. And then two more curved lines on each side of that that will form your pumpkin shape. And then at the top, we have a stem shape. That stem just rests right on the top. See how the, the bumps from the top part of the pumpkin? That forms the base of the stem. So I made the stem curve up and then kind of go at an angle and there's like a, an oval sort of shape on the top of the stem. Then we will paint our pumpkin in. So you will need titanium white and a number four round brush. We need to paint our pumpkin white first before we can do it orange. This is because orange is, um, it tends to be a see-through color. So painting it white first helps get the coverage that we're looking for. So this pumpkin is nice and bright and orange. So in the same way I drew it, I that's how I paint them in. So I start by painting the, the first oval in the center. So I'm just doing that solid titanium white. It is okay if there is color showing through our white. It's a very opaque color. So you could see like hardly anything showing through, but if there's some color showing through on yours, that's okay. But it'll be enough to prime it so where there won't be stuff showing through. And then I do the second curve this time making sure my strokes are curving in the direction of that shape. So I start at the top and curve down. I'm gonna leave a little slither of black showing through. So I'm not gonna make this go completely, it's not gonna to touch that oval completely. See, there's like a slither of black left. That's really gonna be helpful to um, get your pumpkin shape to make it look kind of 3D by leaving that black outline. If you end up accidentally covering the black outline, you can always go back um, later and re-outline that with black paint. So same thing over here, doing this curved shape, leaving a little slither of black still showing through. I'm still going in a curved direction. And then you're repeating the same thing for the next two curved lines, painting those white as well. So you might have noticed that some of my white on my palette got mixed with a little bit of that raw sienna. So the first, like the oval and the first curves I did, 
got a little bit of raw sienna in it, so it ended up being kind of really light beige. That's okay. The whole point of doing this is to cover our dark. So when this dries, we can go back over it with orange paint and it will be nice and bright. You're going to need to let that dry before we can do the orange layer on our pumpkin. So while that's drying, I'm going to show you how I painted the stem. Um, I chose green in this stem just because a brown stem would blend way too much with the rest of the cornucopia. So the inside of that is like a dark brown. We could go with a really light brown, but I thought green would be kind of pretty. So let's actually start with brown and white. So this is raw umber and titanium white for the base of this stem. So I'm just taking my round brush and kind of outlining the stem and just kind of dragging it up with this brown and white. Without rinsing, grab that green and blend that green in. So not only did that provide kind of like an opaque, because green's a see-through color too, but that made it so it's got coverage, but also made that green kind of a, more of a brownish green color. And then at the top, right there, I used a little bit more white to give it kind of that three-dimensional look at the top. You can grab some more green and kind of drag that down, but I'm trying not to over blend these colors. So when we're done with the stem, we can add orange to our palette, cadmium orange hue, and we'll still be using the number four round brush, rinsed the brush off. I'm also going to add some raw sienna to my palette. I'll be using some of that raw sienna into the orange so it's more of like a pumpkin orange color instead of a really super bright orange color. Let's mix equal parts raw sienna and orange together on our palette. We're gonna get kind of a dark orange color. And let's start painting this in. So just like, and we can add a little bit of the red oxide in there too if you want. Just like when we drew and painted it, we're gonna do the same order, starting with the center oval. Um, you don't need to cover all that white completely. If there's a little bit of white still showing through, that's okay. I am making it slightly darker towards the bottom and lighter at the top. So to make it lighter at the top, you can use titanium white and just kind of blend those, the titanium white in at the top. And you could add some red oxide or raw sienna towards the bottom and that makes it a little bit more shadowy at the bottom. So I'm just going to repeat this for each of the pumpkin bumps. Um, I don't need to rinse my brush, so I can just grab the orange and start at the top and curving down Adding the white at the top helps make that a little bit lighter at the top. And then adding our red oxide and our orange at the bottom, that makes it a little bit darker at the bottom. Same thing over here. So you want to leave a little bit of space so that little bit of black that's still showing through from earlier, we wanna kind of let that still be there. We don't wanna cover it all. I actually added a little bit more white to the far right pumpkin bump, just to let that stand out, give it some highlight. So you're just gonna continue and paint the other two bumps using the same technique, starting with your orange, starting at the top, Curving down with your brush. See how I'm kind of like putting pressure on my brush as I curve down? It gives you those thicker strokes. And then a little bit of light pressure when you add the white in there. So you want to add the white very gently. Then our darker colors towards the bottom and stroking upwards. And then you want to repeat the same thing for this one. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra white right here, just so that can stand out from the rest, from the one that's right next to it, so it's lighter, and then darker towards the bottom. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next, I'm going to paint the wheat, and this is Naples yellow. If you're not using Naples yellow, you can mix white with the raw sienna and add a little bit of the primary yellow into it. Let's start by painting two very thin lines going out from the pumpkin. So I just use the tip of the brush, the round brush, the two little very thin lines, and then we can start painting the little wheat pieces, kernels. So I used a combination of titanium and the Naples yellow, and you can see already it's blending too much in with the basket color. So adding more white to this is going to help that stand out. If it's still not standing out, you can make it darker and add brown to it. But each of these kernels is basically like a little teardrop shape that's curved at the bottom, pointed at the top. And I am staggering them. So each one, I'm painting one on the right and then the left, and each one overlaps the previous one. It's like a little teardrop shape, overlap, overlap, until it goes towards the top. And then we can do like these little thin kind of strokes at the top. And then we can go back on the points of some of these and make the points a little bit longer. I'm gonna go back and add some darker brown over here where it's blending in too much. Gives that a little bit of contrast. We could also wait for that to dry and use black for overlapping or outlining. I'm gonna do a leaf with that same Naples yellow color. So really thin leaf that kind of curves, goes to a point. Then I'm going to repeat this with this other wheat piece. So again, little teardrop shapes going right to left, right to left. The base of each of those overlap. So overlap, overlap kind of altering that color by using the white and the raw or and the Naples yellow overlap overlap and then we can go back and make some of these a little bit longer at the tip and we can do another leaf so this one goes out it's very thin a little bit of brown for contrast, and it kind of goes down. You can take that brown and outline that center line. That stands out, it's a little bit darker, it stands out. And then I'm gonna use the, the black. So rinse the brush before using the black, but the black can be used to help outline that center line. So I'm just taking the black on the tip of the brush, painting a very thin line between the kernels of the wheat. Next, we're going to paint the grapes. We'll still be using our number four round brush, so I'm gonna rinse that all off, and I have deep violet loaded on my palette. You don't have to use this ex exact same purple. You can use any purple that you have available. This one's more like a violet reddish purple, but if you wanna use kind of more of a cool purple, you can try dioxazine purple. And let's start by painting circles. So really relatively simple to paint grapes. We need these to kind of stand out from each other. So I'm gonna start loading my brush in white without rinsing and letting white and purple blend themselves. Also these little circles that I'm painting, they're all slightly overlapping each other. So I'm trying to do like a bundle of grapes. It's flat on the bottom. So as I'm painting this, I'm gonna do my circles. So they're kind of lying flat. But these up here can overlap and bunch up. 
So see how that white blends with the purple to create different variation of color. I'm not going for super realism with these grapes. We can start building this up a little bit higher so it's bunched up a little bit more. We can even take these grapes and overlap our pumpkin. So as we paint more circles towards the right, you can decide if you want it to go over the pumpkin or you can decide if your grapes are behind the pumpkin. So you would stop at the orange instead of painting over. I'm gonna have mine overlap the pumpkin. The fun thing about painting a cornucopia is that we can change the placement of our fruits and veggies. You're welcome to add certain fruits or veggies that I didn't do. You can be more detailed with it. If you don't want grapes, you don't have to do grapes. If you want to just do pumpkins, if you want to do gourds or pears, there's lots of creativity you can do with this particular painting. At some point you may find that you're going to need to like wipe the brush off to kind of start over because your purple and white are just making all of the same color. So you can do that. You can have like a soft cloth available to wipe. Going over some of my circles. And then you can go back with your white. And so some of the darker ones, you can just do like a little highlight on them. And then I'm going to draw the leaf. So I'm going to do a little curved line going kind of outwards. And then grape leaves have these different lobes. So this upper piece kind of goes to a point and curves. This one is going to curve outwards the upper lateral lobe and then we have two lower lateral lobes. If you want to simplify this and just do a basic leaf shape you are definitely welcome to do that. And then I'm going to use the green and the round brush to paint this in. So we can start by painting that first little line that went down the middle of the leaf. And we can paint the outline of the leaf. So I'm just outlining the shape of the leaf first. And then I can start filling it in. So I'm going to add some fresh titanium white to my palette. I'm going to use white and green for this just so I can make sure that it's got some bright contrast against the dark part of the basket in the background, but also that this green will cover the area that I'm painting over it. So I'm using green and white to just kind of paint that leaf in, letting the green and white just kind of blend together to create a pretty light green color. Strokes are kind of curved and going in the direction of the shape of the leaf. You can do that center line. So I can wait for this to dry all the way, which is probably best, but if you can't wait, you can start doing some of the lines. So I did the center line, and then there's a curved line in the center of each of the, the lobes of the leaf. And then if you want some texture on the edges, so the grape leaves aren't necessarily smooth on the edges, they're kind of um, spiky. So we can just kind of like drag the brush outwards. So dragging that paint that hasn't dried outwards to give that leaf some texture. 
And then if any part of the grapes got painted over, I wanted this leaf to make it look like it's behind the grapes. So I painted green or painted purple over the green. The next thing I'm going to do is add some outlining to the grapes using the Mars Black, the tip of the round brush and Mars Black. I'm not gonna outline every single circle. That would be kind of tedious to do. But a lot of these circles, I'm outlining kind of the bottom part of the grape where it would be shadowy. This also helps your circle stand out a little bit better. Can do a little bit of outlining on the pumpkin too. So remember how we left the little slither of black in between the lines of the pumpkin? We can go back and outline that to make those stand out a lot. So that's what I'm doing there. I did a little bit of texture on the stem too with the black. So just kind of curved black lines going up from the base of the stem. And I'm loosely outlining the top part of that stem to make that stand out. My leaf is a little saturated, so if I tried to use this black a little even further right here, it is kind of mushing with that green that's not dry. I wanted some of those leaf lines to stand out a little bit. We can also use the black, do a little bit more outlining on our wheat that now should be dried. I'm just going back on the top of the kernels and outlining those little lines that are overlapping each other. That helps that to stand out a little bit better. So we can see the division of each of the kernels. And next, let's draw our apple in. We still have an apple and a sunflower to add to this. But again, if you're simplifying this, you don't have to do all the fruits that I'm doing, or you can add more. So I'm gonna draw this apple with the white chalk pencil and this apple is overlapping the pumpkin. So it is um, kind of curved inwards on the top and the bottom. It is a rounded shape. And after I'm done drawing the apple, I'm going to paint that in white using the four round brush, paint that shape in solid white. It could be helpful to outline the outer edge of the apple shape first and then fill it in solid. I like to kind of contour my strokes as I'm filling it in to make it go in the direction of the shape. So these are curving this way, these are curving this way. In the middle, they're kind of curving in a circular direction. And it's okay if you don't have 100% coverage. The red that I'm gonna use is actually a very opaque red. A lot of reds are not this opaque, but this pyrol red is a relatively um, opaque color. I'm gonna let this dry. Um, if it's not dried 100%, it's fine because if some of that white mixes with this red, it's okay. So this is pyrol red and I'm just, Painting this solid coat of the red, not worried about highlighting just yet. So I'm going to make sure my strokes are going in a curved direction on the left and curve the opposite direction on the right. These are curving this way. And the center, we can have our strokes kind of go straight and then curved. So the direction of the stroke only makes a subtle difference here just because it's solid red and we're not blending anything yet. So before this dries, I'm going to load some new titanium white on my palette. So some fresh white if you need it. A Little bit of white on the brush without rinsing. I'm gonna do these curved strokes. This is going to blend with the red and that's okay. We don't want it to be pure white just yet. I'm just gonna take my finger and just kind of smear that into the rest of the apple. It gives it a little bit of a shiny look. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right, white. It's gonna blend and it's gonna turn into like a really light pink, light red color. Use your finger to smear it. 
Next, I'm gonna load red oxide on my paint palette. I'm gonna use a little bit of this red oxide towards the bottom of this apple. So I'm just kind of dragging this color from the bottom upwards. It's giving that bottom part a little bit more darkness. And then I'll use this color for the stem. So I need a little kind of curved line. I'm gonna add black in there to make that darker. A little curved line right there. So that's below the actual top of the apple. And then another curved line for the stem. Little kind of dot notch at the top. And like a little white highlight on one side of the stem. So keep it very simple, not super realistic. And I'm going to take the red and just kind of go in the back of this and curve around under there. A few more darker strokes. Oops, kind of smeared some of my white highlight over here on the right. So I'm going to go back with the white and do more of a pure highlight. If you want, you could smear that out a little bit, but I kind of like how it's just more of a pure white highlight. Next, I wanna add some more shadowing under my fruits and pumpkin using the 12 Bright Brush and Mars Black. I'm just going to do little kind of loose left and right strokes under the pumpkin, um, under the apple. We can add this under the grapes. This allows the very base of these objects to have shadow underneath. The last object I'm going to paint in is the sunflower. So let's draw this first. You can change the placement of this sunflower, but I'm gonna have mine be over here on the left behind our pumpkin. I'm gonna start by drawing that center circle, but it is behind the pumpkin so we don't see the full circle. And then we can just start drawing all these petals. These are all long teardrop shapes pointed at the tip. This is all behind the leaf, behind the pumpkin, but still in front of the cornucopia. So these petals down here, we barely see them. They just kind of disappear. Then, just like with the pumpkin and apple, we're going to need to paint the flower white. Um, but the center part, we don't need to do white first. That didn't really make sense since it's gonna be dark anyway. So let's do black and brown. This is going to look just like the color of the inside of the cornucopia. So, but that's okay. We can still kind of define that shape area. So we just painted that in solid dark brown. And then let's get our titanium white and the number four round brush. And let's paint each of the petals white first. So it's curved at the base and pointed at the tip. It is okay if the curved part overlaps the circle. We can always go back and adjust that center circle later. Um, just trying not to drag too much brown into this white. But the reason why we're doing it white first is so that yellow could be a bright color and have good coverage and you won't see the background through this object. So back here, our petals are going to kind of disappear because they're behind some of these objects. Um, we can always repaint part of the leaf if necessary. And then this one just kind of disappears behind the leaf and grapes, this one as well. So we don't need to wait for this to dry completely. We wanna go ahead and load our palette with primary yellow and use the same brush. You can decide to rinse the brush or not. I left the white on my brush, but if it's overloaded, you can rinse it off. And we're just painting this yellow. It's okay if it goes outside the lines a little bit, and it's okay if some of that white is still showing. So what I like to do with these simple sunflowers is go back with a darker color. So this is Naples yellow. If you're not using Naples yellow, you can use raw sienna for this. 
but I'm just going to go in and on the sides of some of these petals, I'm going to add, so there's more Naples yellow, add this darker color on one side, and that's going to allow our petals to stand out a little bit better. I also grabbed the raw umber, that dark brown color, and just on the base of these petals, I'm just doing these like little lines and kind of dragging outwards and not turning or not blending the yellow with the brown i'm just adding that brown layer over it and then we can take our dark brown and naples yellow so dark brown and naples yellows are loaded on my brush and i'm doing little dots that was too light for my liking so i went back and added more dark brown and did little kind of stipple dots over that but when you dot the brush it creates that inner texture of the sunflower. We are almost done with this painting. There's just a few touch-ups that I would like to do. So this sunflower petal, it was touching the leaf of the weed. I decided to add black right there to create some division to make it look like it wasn't attached. And a little bit of highlighting on the grapes, a few little white lines. If you want to highlight anything else with the white, like more on the pumpkin or the apple, you're welcome to. You're welcome to add other things to this painting. You can even do a quote. Um, if you have extra room towards the top, you can write thankful or give thanks. But that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint cornucopia on a black canvas. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.